Happy New Year, New Hope. We're so glad that you're joining us online today, and we're going to get started with some worship. The King has come, the dark is over, a brand new day for all my sisters and my brothers. Heaven reached down, no doubt about it, and love has given us the keys to forever. Go tell them. Go tell them what the Lord has done. Go tell them, go tell them, go tell them that the King has come. Yeah. Go tell them, go tell them, go tell them what the Lord has done. Go tell them. Blessings piling up to the ceiling. Turn up your eyes to where the light is and tell the world so they can all know this feeling. Go tell them, go tell them, go tell them what the Lord has done. Go tell them, go tell them, go tell them that the King. New. It's a simple word that conveys things like change, improvements, and hope. Often this word is used to persuade us to buy products, vote for candidates, or change jobs. When our lives become cluttered with disappointment, frustration, confusion, and heartache, the longing for something new is strong. But there is an even bigger story here. The Bible gives us a real and honest picture of how our lives and the whole world have been damaged by our estrangement from God. Instead of giving up on us, He did something radically unexpected and new to rescue us. He sent us Jesus. Through a personal relationship with Him, we can find peace, hope, and meaning that changes everything. The start of something new. This week, a new life discovered. Well, hey everyone, welcome to New Hope um, Online this uh, January 1st, 2023. Um, I'm Rusty Coram, Senior Pastor at New Hope Church. I'm really glad you're with us. Um, we are doing our first service of the year um, all virtually, um, so everyone can watch online, and if not live, you can watch it um, on demand. But we wanted to give our staff and volunteers some time off and uh, we'll be back, um, back to normal, which will be very good starting January 8th. Uh, but anyway, I'm just really glad that we can do this together. And um, if this um, service today is helpful to you, I hope you'll find someone and share it with them. Give them the link. Uh, we've been doing a series that we wrap up today um, called The Start of Something New. We were looking at tying in with Advent, Advent, um, the word actually means looking forward to something coming, anticipating. And 
Jesus birth um, and, and recognizing the impact of it is what Advent's about. It's interesting, Jesus' birthday wasn't celebrated for a long, long time after, um, after he had died and was resurrected. Easter was the most important event. But as time went on, there were some things that made it clear that celebrating his birthday would be important. The fact that he really did live, he, he became a human just like us. There were some controversies and some heresies floating around. And so his birthday began to be something celebrated in probably around the third century AD. And I'm really glad we can. It's, it's, it's a good thing to know that where we live here in the U.S., that we can still celebrate the birth of Christ. Um, even people that um, are not Christians uh, know the songs, know the lyrics. They, they hear the gospel message regularly. Um, so anyway, we're um, finishing up this series, and we're looking at this thing about um, the impact of um, understanding what Jesus did. Um, this is, uh, and I want to thank Becky. Uh, Becky did the drawing. Um, people have complained about mine being illegible. I'm not sure if that's true, but anyway. The, the nutshell story of what Jesus came and did can be seen in these three circles. The first is, is God created the world and us um, really good. Um, everything that um, has been created, he created out of nothing, and he did it deliberately, he did it carefully, and the crown of his creation is you and me. People created in his image so that we could have a unique relationship with him. And this is really critical to understand that everything was designed with a good intent. But the, the thing that happened is when God created human beings, he gave us the capacity to choose to love and follow him or to choose not to. And from the first human beings on, we have sinned. Sin is, um, it basically just means we've decided to go our own way. We've looked at some verses about this. Um, one of the illustrations in the Bible is kind of like sheep. We're biopic, we think we know more than we do, um, and we choose to go our own way, and that puts us in danger. And it leads to what we see throughout the world, and that is brokenness. If you want to trace and see where most of the problems that we have come from, it's from the sinfulness of human beings. In fact, it says when the first human beings sinned, that it ended up um, bending and, and breaking all of created order. So, so many of the things that we see that are wrong in the world, we have beauty, but then there's brokenness in the midst of it. We see these beautiful beaches in Florida, and then we see what happens when a Cat 4 or Cat 5 hurricane comes through. But all of that to say is sin is the reason there's brokenness in the world. And specifically thinking about my brokenness and yours is when we're broken, we're trying to figure out how to fix it. And so we come up with all kinds of ways. Um, we may come up you know, maybe if I can just work harder and be successful in my work or make a name for myself, um, that would create, uh, that, that would deal with my brokenness. Or maybe it's, I'm going to, I'm going to have relationships that fulfill me and where I'm needed and cared for. And, um, but that doesn't end up really fixing our brokenness. We're still broken. And so we have to go through relationship after relationship. It could be, I'm trying to find a way to to numb the pain and the loss that I feel inside, the anxiety, the anger, the fear. Um, and I can come up with all kinds of ways to numb it. It could through, be through material things. It could be through um, drugs, alcohol, some of the name brand self-medicating resources. But um, ultimately, that doesn't work either. Um, some will even go into other kind of religion, create a religion that fits what they want to do. But it... It just doesn't work. And we can come up with all kinds of ways to try to fix our brokenness. Broken things will never fix broken things. And so the Bible says God created us good. He wants a relationship with us because of our own choices, our sin. We've become broken, us and everybody else in the world. And that brokenness, um, it can't be fixed. Um, and there's nothing we can do to fix it. And that's where it says that this really, really good news comes in. And that is that God did for us what we could never do for ourselves. He sent Jesus 
so that if we were to accept Christ, accept Jesus um, as our Savior and the leader of our life, then we can have our brokenness changed through this good news, and we can, we can follow him and rebuild our lives toward this good design that God gave. It's an amazing thing to think that God could have easily given up on us and we deserve to be just rejected. But his love compelled him to do something for us that we could never do ourselves. And to go from brokenness to accepting the good news, it's just this, as I just admit that I am broken, admit that my sin has created the problems that I have and the distance that I have from God and others. Choose to believe that God sent Jesus for me and that Jesus came so I could... I could be forgiven. Jesus lived a perfect life to pay the price for my imperfect life. And then just choosing to follow him. And I want to look at this for a minute, this idea of choosing to follow him. It doesn't mean that I'm just going to take his name. It means that I'm going to actually accept him and I'm going to, because I'm choosing to follow, I'm going to start to rebuild my life according to his good design. In other words, I'm going to, I mean, the Bible is going to be the guide for my life now. God is now the one in charge of my life because remember, I'm choosing to follow him. I'm not going to go back to the old ways. Sometimes you'll talk to people that say they're followers of Jesus, but they're living in the old brokenness, the, the ways that are against what God has said, things that do not respect his good design. It's why a proper understanding of the Bible is so important for you, me, by being part of a a church is important. We're, we're in a community where we're helping each other resist going back to our broken ways or following whatever the culture says and rebuilding our lives according to this good design God had. That's why Bible study is so, so important. And not just study, but understanding it and then applying it in our lives. This message and my intent in our series is that we would all understand this message and be able to explain it and communicate it. Some years back, I was having lunch with a guy. Actually, we were just having coffee and he was not a Christian, but he was kind of interested. He'd asked me some questions. And so I just got a napkin at the restaurant we're in and just drew a diagram like this on the napkin. Very simple, good design. We've broken it. We um, Sin has gotten us separated from God and this brokenness is all over by admitting, believing, and choosing the good news of God sending Jesus for us and accepting him, we can have a brand new life. And then, then we get to show and tell others. We show them by our example. We tell them how it happened. I did this on a napkin and um, the guy's name was Major. Major looked at it. He was really impressed um, with this whole idea, not so much with me, but just this idea. And he goes, can I keep that napkin? I'd like to take it and show it to, guy, to the guys at work. Um, don't ever underestimate the power of something simple to communicate something really, really significant. And so I'm hoping that all of us um, at the end of this series will know how to take this and to use it um, to share this great news with people around us. Um, and so I wanna close out our series. I wanna use one passage from the Bible this is from 1 Peter. Um, and let this be a guide to us as we close out this series thinking about Christmas. We're heading into Easter and the impact you and I can have on lives around us in the year 2023. Listen to this passage. It says, but in your heart, set, a, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have but do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience. Let me read it one more time. But in your heart, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. Just a few key words or phrases in this. The first is set apart. Set apart Christ as Lord. Um, the word, there's uh, other translations will use the word sanctify. Sometimes this word is used in other contexts as the word holy. But it means to be put aside and used for specific purposes. Um, in the case of you and I being followers, when I set apart Christ as, 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 as my Lord, what it means is I'm 
I'm limiting my life to only those things that um, please him and pursue his purposes is my priority. Um, I'm, I'm making sure that I am, I am wholly his. I've got a, this is a, a carving set that I pull out a couple times a year, maybe three. Um, I don't use this knife for anything except for real special occasions carving. Um, I keep it sharp. I would never use this to go out and chop some wood out in the yard or um, I'd never open a paint can with it. It's been set aside. It's been set apart. It's been made um, sanctified for certain purposes. That's what God wants our lives. Once we move from brokenness and accepting the good news, he wants us now to be set apart for him. And that's why the Bible is important. I, I learn what it says. I'm following it because I want my life to reflect God's good design. So I need to set apart Christ as Lord in my life. And I need to, um, this idea of um, in, in my heart, um, the heart is the command and control center of our life. That means that um, Jesus is now the one in charge of my command and control center. Um, the word Lord, it means the leader, the commander, the um, uh, the ultimate authority in my life. So I have decided that I am now his. He is the Lord of my life. So the command and control center is now under his control. And so my, and, and heart, so many times we fall into the hallmark view of this, but the heart, according to the Bible, it's the center of my, my will and my emotions, my decisions, my choices, my values, my beliefs. It affects everything that I am and everything that I do. And so I am, I, I'm, I've devoted myself, I've set apart Jesus. Jesus is the one who is completely in charge of me. I'm set apart for him and I've set myself up to where he is the only one that I follow. He is the Lord of my life. And it's a title that I give him. Not, I don't just call him Lord, but I actually live it out. Um, my, whether it's true or not is confirmed by my actions, my day-to-day -day choices, big things, or little things. Um, and that's why, again, understanding the Bible is so important for you and me. Great links were gone to so that you and I would have God's word, the Old Testament and New Testament. We have examples, we have explanations, we have principles, we have um, uh, people to follow, both good examples and bad examples. And it's designed to, to build our lives according to God's good design. So I'm set apart. I've set apart my life for Jesus' specific use. He's in charge of me. And now I'm going to follow him. It's my privilege and my um, uh, just a, it's an amazing thing that I get to follow him. And it's my choice that I will do it. So I've set apart him as the Lord of my life. I'm set apart for him. He's he's in charge like this. Um, and and now he, the command that I'm given here in First Peter is that I need to be able to answer those who ask about the hope that I have. Um, this um, give an answer to those who ask. It was a legal term. It was used of a, a lawyer answering the question in the courtroom where we would answer honestly, clearly, and compellingly. Um, the assumption here is that as you and I live, as we walk, walk out our faith, that people are going to ask us about this hope that we have. Um, there are people that are going to watch our lives, be noticing us in, in our home, our work, school, in neighborhoods, online. Um, we're always being watched. And there's some things that should be distinctly noticed about followers of Christ. And it should be that there's this thing that, uh, about us that is different and that people will want to know. They'll ask questions. Sometimes they might be asking, um, asking them, um, kind of making fun of us. Why don't you just, why don't you do all this other stuff that you used to do? Why don't you have the same attitude these people do? Why don't you, um, why haven't you built your life strictly about possessions and work? Or why aren't you running around numbing yours? I mean, there's all kinds of things that can happen. And it's saying that we're going to be noticed and we want to show something that is really good so that we can tell others about it. And so, you know, I give an answer for those, however they ask, whether they're asking 
with genuine motives or they're asking to make fun of us, it doesn't matter. We need to give them a reason for the hope that we have and to have an answer for that. Um, the, the, one of the worst things that could happen is people would ask us questions like this. Well, why are you so mean spirited? Why are you so harsh and judgmental about people that don't think or believe like you do? Why don't you care about other people? Why don't you listen? Um, why are you so distant? What Peter is saying that is if we really have set ourselves up to follow Jesus as our Lord, then there are going to be questions that are raised and people are going to notice something distinctly Jesus-like in our lives. And then we have a chance to, to answer. We have a chance to give a reason for this hope that we have. It's, um, it's, it's living with this attitude of hopefulness, a kind of a confident assurance that this is not all there is to my life. There, is, um, there, there are things that we're going to go through here that are tough and hard. Remember, we live in a broken world among broken people. Um, and there is no such thing as heaven on earth. There will be heaven, yes. But this side of heaven, we're going to have um, good times and rough times. We're going to have difficulties. We're going to have things that, that just uh, uh, completely... Um, can seemingly overwhelm us. But our hope is not based on our circumstances or that things are necessarily going to get better. Our hope is based in a trust in a person who gave his life for us. Our hope is in Jesus Christ, that he is taking care of us and that he will take care of us. Our hope is not in a government or some kind of group or um, our, our own personal resources but it's in the God that came to rescue us, a God that promised us that he will never abandon us. There is, there is reason for you and I to live with hope. And this, this story, this picture here, explains where that hope comes from. It comes from a person, the one that gave us the good news. Um, and again, there'll be a time in heaven where we can recognize even the hard things that we've been through here had a good purpose in God's mind, that it, pain here is not wasted and it's not lost. So it says that we need to um, give an answer to everyone who asks us to give a reason for the hope that we have and then a, a warning, but do this with gentleness and respect, something that our culture has missed. And I'm afraid in oftentimes the church has missed this too, um, where we've been judgmental or uh, mean-spirited or um, derisive of others. This idea of gentleness and respect, it means without any arrogance or pride or any um, I'm better than you attitude. Um, it's, 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 a, it's responding to people with kindness and caring, even if we're being mocked and ridiculed. Remember this, God came for broken people like you and me, and he sent Jesus with the good news even while we were still broken, while we were completely uninterested in God and his ways. Jesus is our model here. Um, he would always be clear and direct and honest, but he always spoke the truth in love. Um, had he not, we would have had no hope. We would have had no chance of being rescued. So our model in all this is to follow Jesus um, and I would say, especially when we're being mistreated, when we're being treated with disdain or disrespect, um, when we're being maligned, when we're being um, prejudged. Um, you'll see this in Peter's letter in the context of this, where people were being persecuted because of their faith. And he said, look, even if others come after you, even if they're dead wrong in how they do it, you stand up strong. You stand up as a follower of Jesus. Um, and don't give in to broken world responses of retaliation or revenge. Um, when our response is fueled more by our brokenness than God's good design, um, we create opportunities for people just to turn their back on Jesus and to say, who needs that? Let me read this passage one more time. But in your heart, set apart Christ as Lord. 
Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience. It's a pretty simple mandate we've been given and a great opportunity. And it could be you'll be at a restaurant and you can use a napkin to explain this. It could be you'll be having a conversation with someone online and you get to talk about it. We're constantly being watched. There are people all around us that are looking and to see, are we genuine? Are, is this real? Is, is there really something here different about us in a good way? Um, or have we adopted a lot of the world's way? So we say we're following Jesus, but what's happened is we, we've just kind of, um, kind of slipped into adopting these old ways. And God says, no, you follow me. You follow the example of my son. One of the reasons Jesus spent 30 plus years um, here on planet earth was so that we would have an example to follow. And the New Testament is just full of so many examples of what he did, what his disciples learned, how they lived, and how you and I can. Um, so I'm hoping that as we start 2023, you'll join me and we'll make learning this and sharing this something that becomes just a natural part of our lives. Uh, we want to live it out and then we want to show it. We want to help others come to know this relationship with Jesus. I know some people have said that it's really tough being a follower of Jesus now and um, people aren't, they don't have the kind of respect for the church that they used to. There's all kinds of ways to, to frame uh, cultural attitudes, but people are broken just like you and I have been. And God loves broken people and he wants everyone to hear this good news. He wants us to accept him, to find this new life that he offers, begin building our life, rebuilding our lives according to his good design and to come and show and tell everyone we can this amazing news that God offers. Um, let's do it together. Let's make 2023 a big year for people coming to know Christ, people that you and I know and care about. Let's, let's pray together. God, this has been a simple message. There's nothing tricky to it. There's nothing new. But we need to hear. We need to, we need to think about those things that matter. We need to be reminded of them. It's easy for us to get distracted and caught up in all kinds of other things. But at the end of the day, we have a short time of here on planet Earth and a short opportunity to help others come to know who you are, what you offer, and to urge them and persuade them by our example and by our words to come to know you too and be adopted into your family. Help us to do what we can and to do everything we can individually and collectively as your church to be about helping others find you and to hear this great, great news. In Christ's name, amen. So before we go, close out our service, let me mention just a handful of things. Um, this message, if it's something that has meant something to you and if you feel like it would be helpful, pass the link on to some others. Um, if you've missed any messages in this series, they're easily to get on demand from our website or use our app. And again, just I just encourage you to share those. Some you might want to go back and listen to again and, and just get a handle on what the Bible is teaching um, that God wants us to know. A few things. We have a new Bible reading plan that we um, just rolled out. You can get that. Um, again, the app has every bit of this. We also have been sending out our weekly emails. If you're not getting the weekly emails, let us know. Just send your address to info at newhope.org. Um, but the new Bible reading plan is going to be super. It's going to take an overview of the whole Bible and the message of the Bible. So I hope you'll join us. And then we do our Monday night a Bible study prayer night where we talk this through and, and work through it. it. It would be a great way to, to begin the year. Um, we have a blood drive on Saturday, January 7th. You can sign up for um, partnership at New Hope. Um, we really value people that have decided to become partners with us. It's 
uh, other churches may use the term membership. We've used this word um, deliberately because the idea of partnership is we're all in this together. We're all, all working hard for the same goal. Um, it's annually renewable. So those of you that are already partners, you'll be getting an email um, about re-upping uh, re for 2023. Those of you that haven't, we have a class coming up 1st of February uh, for Discovering Partnership. Gives you tells you everything about New Hope. You can ask your questions and all that. Um, and again, all this and more is in our app. We also have journey classes coming up uh, soon. So I hope you'll just take advantage of that. Pass it on to others too. Um, let them know what's going on and and make it a priority to do the things that are going to help you grow, rebuild your life and follow that good design God has. Um, and then work other things, entertainment and other things around that. If you're not careful, what we do is we miss opportunities and we want to grab up all of them that we can. So I hope you'll do that. You hang in there. I look forward to seeing you soon when we're meeting again live next week. Um, until then, hang in there. God loves you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.
time to go But before I leave Go tell the world about me I was dead but now I live I've gotta go now for a little while But goodbye is not the end Don't to do here before you leave so go tell the world about me I was dead but now I live I've gotta go now for a little while but goodbye is not Thank you so much for joining us this week. We'll see you back at New Hope next week.